Did you know that there are two accounts of the ascension in the Bible by the same author? Luke, assumed to be a doctor, wrote both the Gospel of Luke, you just heard proclaimed, and the book called The Acts of the Apostles, the first reading this morning. But there's one curious thing about these two accounts by the same author. In this Gospel, Luke puts the story of Jesus, the ascension, as occurring on the night of the day of Easter. And in Acts, Luke puts that same event, the ascension of our Lord, occurring 40 days later. Now, I've always noticed discrepancies in the Bible, as all of us have, I'm sure. But I've got to say, I was kind of surprised to notice this for the first time. I feel like I should have seen this a long time ago. But this is one of the few times, if any others are out there, where the same author has discrepancies with his own texts. In the Gospel, the ascension is presented on the night of the day of Easter to reflect on this happening at the end, the conclusion of Jesus' whole life. His crowning, if you will, the fulfillment of everything he had said and done, the culmination, definitely the completion of his life. That's why it's right there at the end of the Gospel. This completion is where everything led in his life, the good times and the bad, the suffering and the resurrection. That's the Gospel, according to Luke. But the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, according to that same Luke, sees the ascension not as a completion, not as the culmination, not as the fulfillment, or the crowning, but rather as the prelude. The prelude, the beginning of everything else. This Jesus movement begins with this event right there. And while his whole life on earth was ending, our life as church was just beginning that same event. Same experience, two different perspectives, two different takes on the same event. And as I thought about that this week, I started to think, look at all the experiences of my own life from these two points of view and see with a sort of a new light how both were always there. And while sometimes I got too caught up in one over the other, all the time, even when I didn't know it, both perspectives of the same event were there. There's something true here, isn't there, about our lives? As our community here at the CSC moves into this time of graduations, SLU and College of Pharmacy this past yesterday, as a matter of fact, just yesterday, WashU, the School of Nursing this week, and many others in between, we can see even these events from both perspectives, even though on any given day we might feel one over the other. Is graduation a beginning or is it an ending? Certainly for our graduates of our grad schools as well as undergrads, this is the end. This is the culmination of things. And there is in them and in us a justifiable pride and gratitude, gratitude for your achievement, as I hope you find in yourself as well. It has all really come to this, hasn't it? And that degree you receive in your hands yesterday or this coming weekend, that degree becomes your crown, the end result of countless hours of reading and tests and papers and research and no small amount of anxiety. And more, too. Friendships built and established now. 
the communities you have risked being a part of over these years, including the CSC, Sunday after Sunday and in between. Certainly this is the end of things. And certainly this is the very beginning as well. The beginning of everything else. It begins this week for you who are graduating and for us left behind as we say goodbye to you. As surely as it did for Jesus when he left and left behind those who were his own in the world. And the community they built that is the movement still alive in the world 2,000 years later that accounts for us here today that would have never happened had he not gone. Same event. Graduation this time. Two very different points of view. Can life hold both all the time? The truth revealed in these texts, to me at least, is that not only can life do that, life must be able to do that for us. We cannot let it, for long at least, be just one or the other. In tears and in laughter these days, both points of view are present and accounted for. Isn't the same true for every wedding you've ever attended or we celebrated here? Lizzie and Andy Wiegert, they just got married. Would you guys stand up? Congratulations. We love you. <laughs> How many years, Lizzie, did you walk down this aisle as a college student, as an intern, moving the knobs and setting the lights until that day you walked down this aisle to go into Andy's arms? a beautiful bride with an awesome husband. Certainly, that's the culmination of things. You know, she looked so forward to that moment, I can say. And it all led to there, everything in formation does for every bride and groom ever, ever. And yet, to see her dance in his arms later that night, that wasn't about culmination or ending or achievement anymore. That is about beginning. That is about the beginning of a whole new dance, a whole new life right there. It's true for every wedding, isn't it? Wasn't it of your own? Yesterday I celebrated a 50th anniversary and to see that couple after 50 years surrounded by their children and their grandchildren, this whole plethora of human beings that began just like the church did with one event. I do. Blows me away. And isn't it true for every kiss when friendship becomes something more? And isn't it true when parents drop their kids off for college for the first time and drive away without them or students stand here wondering what life will be like in college now in a strange city with no friends and their mom and dad driving away? Death is that too, if we're honest with ourselves, I think. Wasn't that death, that day, that funeral parlor, those people, that mass, that cemetery, an ending, a culmination, but also can't we say it was the beginning of something else? This is where it all leads. This is where it all begins. Same event. Same experience. Life is in every death. Death is in every life. Every goodbye is also a hello, and every hello carries goodbyes in it, someday, somehow. Same event, different perspective. As I listen to and read extensively about the scandals facing our church right now internationally, I sort of see that it's all sort of led to this shameful behavior in some ways. So much did. And I also see more clearly than ever, 
more clearly than ever that this is a whole new way of being church emerging right now, a whole new way of being church. Which side do you stand on? Does it have to be either or? Can it not be both and? In each of these moments in all of our lives, we, you and I, hold both points of view together as surely as the dawn every morning carries the night and the day and as surely as every dusk. If we don't, if we give away, if we give way rather to our fear and the insecurity of these times, and that's there too, the fear and insecurity is very real during these times of transition, these events. But if we give way to that fear, we miss the grace. And these are times of great grace. Whether it's watching these folks that we love walk down the aisle in the quad this coming Friday, or standing here in these pews watching the people we love get married, or standing beside the casket of a mom or a dad, even a son, please God no, but even a son or a daughter. These are times of great grace. This boundary place, this threshold, that can always be seen as an ending and as a beginning. There's a wonderful little song that captures one image of this most precious place where we have all stood at one time or another and will again. It captures in one image that end of a time called closing time when the last call sounds for the last round of drinks before we leave. And this morning, we dedicate this song to the class of 2010 who stand themselves in this ascension moment this moment of beginnings and endings. And with this song, we say goodbye to you with no small amount of sadness and a wholehearted congratulations on a remarkable achievement. And we say to you from the other side of that same event, New journey, new journey, here you come. Closing time, open all the doors and go out into the world. Closing time, turn the lights up over every boy and every girl. Closing time, one last call for alcohol, so finish your whiskey or beer. Closing time, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Closing time, time for you to go out to the places where you will be from. Closing time, this room won't be open till your brothers or your sisters come. So gather up your jackets and move into the exits. I hope that you have found a friend. Closing time, every new beginning comes from some other beginnings and
closing time time for you to go out to the places where you will be from closing time every new beginning comes from some other beginnings and